and Arvind Thakur has used a very nice term. It's Newtonian physics. So 19th, 19th, so I would rather say 20th century onward, early 20th century onwards, whatever has been done is broadly classified as modern physics. So whatever was discovered, invented, 20th century onwards, so roughly like 100 years in the in the past 100, 125 years, Yes, yes, Manjushri, awesome. She's using the term related to quantum physics. Yes, quantum is one of the modern physics topics in there, right? I will give you a brief introduction of that also if required. So anything that was done in physics, field of physics from 20th century onwards is considered modern physics. Now, before that was all classical physics. So classical physics is mainly uh, Newtonian physics. Obviously, Newton was not the only one doing the 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 contribution in the field of physics but most of the work not not most but majority of the work was done by newton and that is why classical physics can also be termed as newtonian physics but then please remember newtonian physics doesn't really mean just newton right? so so early work can be called classical or modern so so far what we have understood is there was a classical physics so classical physics would in, include terms like uh, conservation of momentum, right? Conservation of angular momentum, the three laws of motion, right? These things, uh, modulus of elasticity, like fluid mechanics, all these are examples of classical physics. Now comes the modern part. So modern part is when you talk of, th let's say radioactivity. Right, so we don't, we do, we did not know radioactivity, uh, activity, right? So things like fission and fusion, right? Fission, fusion. What else has been discovered in the past hundred years or something? What is inside an atom? What is inside a nucleus? We did not know all this in the eight, 19th century. Now things like what is photoelectric effect? These are the things that come under modern physics. Anybody who is not clear. Now, as Manjushri says, quantum also comes under this. Quantum, as well as theories of, both the theories of relativities. Clear? Any, any particular confusion, any particular details needed anywhere? Please, I'm giving you five seconds to ask, and then I'm moving on, because if nobody... Black body radiations, rhythm says black body radiations. Yes, these are the things that were uh, either invented or discovered in past 125 years, maybe whatever, early part of 20th century to today. Maybe somebody will say iPhone or Google. I mean, those are the technologies also. Think about it. Internet, internet was never there, right? So those are the things, all modern things, right? Android phones, uh, like like uh, uh, Google Home, right? Amazon Dot, Echo, right? So those are the things which are all new. But classical physics is what we have been studying so far. Now we are entering the world of modern physics. So when we study modern physics, we are going to contribute equal amount of time. First of all, we are going to study atom today and in the next session. And then we are going to study photoelectric effect. Okay, so Ninard, I was actually speaking for past seven, eight minutes about what is modern physics. Now you're writing what is modern physics. So rewind the video and check back, right? Photoelectric effect. I was actually talking on what is, the question was what is modern physics? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You missed that part, please come on time, but, but rewind it, you will get your answer. <coughs> and then nucleus, right? So Ninard, we are going to focus in modern physics on atom, nucleus, and photoelectric effect. These are the three things we are going to focus on. We are starting with atom today. So let me ask everybody, including Nina, did you study this chapter? Did you read this chapter? Did you at least read the PDF that is there on Vedanta? Okay. So this is what I get. 50 50 kind of that's that's all right no we, we so nina is saying i thought theory of relativity and all that stuff theory of relativity is not in your curriculum 
I can speak it all day. I have told earlier also that is one thing that I was fascinated to physics about. That is my favorite topic. I teach it to many students. Many students I have taught it. But then unfortunately, it is not in your curriculum. So I'm not even going to talk about it. If you meet me in person, I can really bore you. I can talk hours and hours on that. Similarly, quantum physics, we are not talking of quantum physics. That is another interesting topic. So we are never going to study relativity and quantum in our cur curriculum here because that's not in CBSE curriculum, unfortunately. It should have been, but it is not, right? So when you study a higher level physics, you will study those. We are not going to talk about it. If required, I can I can stay for an extra 15 minutes and give you introduction of that one of these days. I can do it today also, next class also. It's fine with me. I love to talk about it. So yeah, that's I'm really telling so a couple of students are saying this is this is my favorite topic. I'm really I was fascinated about this. That is why I started into the field of physics. Quantum, I can speak, but I'm not a master of that. Quantum, I, I understand it, but I cannot teach you and make you a master relativity is really my my best kind of yeah anyways atomic structure so before we go into that no google no questions uh, asked on google how big is an atom just whatever you know based on your physics knowledge or whatever how big is an atom roughly right in what range okay now can somebody write on uh, chat box how big is a nucleus then so basically first let me tell you the, the answer is 10 to the power minus 10. so let's write it down here what i'm trying to say so let's make an atom let's let's make an atom this is an a nucleus and there is an atom with all the shells around it, right? So what we are saying is this size from here to here is roughly 10 to the power minus 10 meters. Okay. Now rhythm is telling me the nucleus is actually 10 to the power minus 50. But that is a problem because I cannot make this here. See, really, I don't know how many of you understand as I am speaking now. If this is my nucleus, then the atom should be one lakh times of this, bigger than this room, bigger than this community itself, right? If your atom was this room, then your nucleus is this tip of the span. So that is a big gap over there. It's all vacuum. So everything out there is just empty space. Again, I'm repeating. This room is tiny, actually. Two of these rooms together is one atom then its nucleus is this size. So everything is all empty space there. You really have to understand the magnitude of difference between atom and nucleus that we have. Has everybody understood? Right. So nucleus is 10 to the power minus 15 meters and atom is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. But that means this is 10 to the power five times or one lakh times the size of the nucleus. Take it clear. So let's understand models of atom, which you have already studied part of it in your chemistry classes, I'm assuming. Whichever is not clear, I'm going to explain in more and more detail. First of all, Dalton model. So Dalton model was way back when nobody thought about, but then if you read some of the, the Indian scriptures, you actually think of, they are talking about Parmanu and Anu, right? So Anu is, Anu is the atom, Parmanu is the, the Oh, sorry, Anu is the molecule and Parmanu is that, right? As far as I can understand more Hindi on that. So way back hundreds of years ago, maybe they were already talking about this in our grunts and all that. But then, then in, in the physics world, whatever has been documented, Dalton model gave the imagination, like everything is made up of tiny little indestructible particles. Indestructible means there's nothing beyond that. These are the tiniest thing that you can ever think of. And then came Thomson model. Thomson said he actually invented all this negative, positive. He spoke about plum pudding model. He said uh, there is a <coughs> sorry. So plum pudding, you understand, right? Pudding, and then you put plums on it or cherries on it, right? So similarly, he's saying everything is a positively charged pudding, and there are plums on it, plums or cherries, whatever you want to think of. There are kind of like they are. Uh, for, for that is the plum pudding model right now came the rutherford model who does not understand rutherford's experiment 
yeah so rhythm is saying watermelon is better than pudding because it has natural sugar so watermelon structure kind of like this is a watermelon and these are watermelon seeds right black color seeds now who does not understand rutherford model does everybody in the class understand this hello bina does everybody in the class understand rutherford experiment yes or no based on your your chemistry classes maybe okay so from delton model we we took one big step here we said oh if you're not able to see the whiteboard you got to refresh your browser please try refreshing it okay now from delton model we made a big jump because delton model said there is nothing beyond this tiny i mean there is nothing smaller than this now thompson says no there are smaller negatively charged particles here and that was a big step here but then with rutherford model we are taking a huge step we are saying no that's that's wrong basically everything that is positive is tightly packed in such a tiny thing and then most of it is empty space and the negative charges are going around in the shells over there so that was the rutherford model can somebody tell me why rutherford model failed i'm going to cover all this again on a blank slide again because i think some students are not getting it so can anybody tell me why did what was wrong with rutherford model what was the limitation or what was not going to be explainable by this can anybody tell me no you have to participate please okay uh, atri thank you for doing that so atri said because it cannot explain electronic motion rukaiya says stability of atoms both of you are perfect yeah you're right right okay sure so i think we'll cover this in a little detail after we see this i, I think I'll, I'll create a blank slide first so we started with a delton model delton model is saying there is an atom and that is it you cannot uh, yes yes rhythm you're absolutely right okay so delton model says these are tiny particles atoms are tiny particles they are not made up of anything else they are made up of themselves these are the tiniest things you can have and then thompson came in and and he added that yeah everything is neutral but that is neutral because there is a positive watermelon here like like uh, uh, rhythm said and there are negatively charged some particles on that right and then everything is still neutral because positively charged pudding has these negative charged plums on it right yes yes uh, manjushri has given exact answer rhythm you're right and everybody so far is perfect yeah and then came rutherford so the thompson model kind of makes sense but then when rutherford did this experiment this, this was really a big big uh, unfortunately i have cold and i have these tissue papers here i have a running nose today so it was like like you collide heavy alpha particles right alpha particles should so it's like making heavy uh, kind of bullets go through this and they should go through that right more everything should go through that because if you're talking of thomson model thomson model is actually saying it is all spread out so that means the density is very light so it's more like a tissue paper here and then everything should just go through that alpha particles are very energetic but surprisingly some of the alpha particles actually came back as if there were stones hidden in there right but there's nothing like that so what he observed is everything goes through that very minority actually hit something very solid and they bounce back 180 degrees now look at the picture here and this is really really interesting right because if you're saying it is very less density thingy you should not f any of these coming back how can they come back this is impossible and that's why he deducted that no the thomson model is wrong in reality there are tiny there's a tiny space there which is positively charged and everything all the mass is concentrated there you don't have anything outside of it now when the mass is concentrated at tiny spaces we go here so now you have this paper here maybe the mass is concentrated at very tiny i can't even draw them right because they have to be tinier than this now when the things go through these alpha particles most of them are going through this these empty spaces which is empty space right a minority of them are going to collide with these nuclei there and that is what brings them back and that's when he proposed all this shell and all that 